In this video, we are going to take a look at Windows Server Update Services. This is a role on Windows Server that allows us to approve updates and manage the updates in our company, as well as possibly even load them locally so that we can distribute them from within our network, rather than sending every computer on our network out to the internet to pull in updates. So what I have here is a, um, a Windows Server. Uh, this one happens to be a fresh install, but uh, that really doesn't really make a difference. This service usually runs pretty standalone and it doesn't really interfere with other services. Uh, but just for cleanliness sake, this is a fresh install. Um, I've joined it to a domain, which shouldn't really be a big issue for us. You can run this on a domain or off a domain. Uh, I've given it a name and a static IP address and that's about it. That's really all the requirements I've got at this point. This happens to be in a Hyper-V um, child partition, but that doesn't really make much of a difference for us either. What I want to do to get Windows Server Update Services installed is add the role. And I'll say next. And this is a role-based installation, so I'll say next and I'll make sure my server selected and say next and then the role we want in order to set this up is the very bottom one the Windows Server Update Services role And when you select that role for installation it wants to bring along all these additional features too these are some uh, other required pieces like .NET uh, IIS plays a bit of a role in here as well because some of this does happen over a web server instance and the Windows internal database is going to come along too it's kinda like a mini SQL database that doesn't require a lot of management uh, but it doesn't have a whole lot of horsepower either and then of course the remote server administration tools that are used to manage Windows Server Update Services. So I want to add all of those in. If you leave these off you might have some trouble. And I can click Next. You'll notice IIS was selected. Not all of IIS is actually brought along, only the parts that it requires. And then we don't need any additional features beyond the ones that it already chose to bring along. And then by selecting the Windows Server Update Services, the wizard does add in the WSUS um, components to uh, configure during this wizard. Now, here's our only real choice. We have the Windows internal database that we're going to use and the Windows Server Update Services services. We don't need to select database uh, unless we're going to use some other database. The Windows internal database is going to be sufficient for us. So leaving the defaults is going to work for me. Now if you have a much larger environment, you might choose uh, to connect it to a larger database system. This choice is also pretty important. What this is asking us is, do we want our Windows Server Update Services um, server to download all of the updates for us from the internet and then bring them locally and then distribute them on our LAN or do we want to just include the management features and let our clients go out to the internet and uh, pull those updates from the Windows Update servers themselves. Now there's pluses and minuses here. If you want to store these updates locally depending on the number of products you've chosen this can be a huge amount of data. At least 6 gig no, it's going to be way more than that. You it, you probably know at this point, if you do Windows updates on a fresh install, you have to bring in a lot of updates in order to uh, complete that update. And that's for one product. Once we start adding in the Office products or multiple versions of Windows, this space is going to be chewed up really quick. So I would say plan on having a ton of space because it just grows and grows and grows. Maybe half a terabyte or so it would be great to have that kind of access. Um, and that's if you want to store the updates and that is the default choice. I'm going to uncheck this. I'm using a test environment here. Uh, I'm not updating a ton of clients. If I'm updating more than say 20 clients I might try choose to bring these in and store them locally. But because I'm really doing this as more of a test environment I'm going to uncheck that. I don't want to download hundreds of gigs of updates. 
to my server. The next piece of the wizard does send us a little bit through the web server installation, but there's not a whole lot of choices we need to make here. All of these defaults are already required for Windows Server Update Services, and you shouldn't take any of these away, but you could add more if you plan on doing more with IIS along with this installation. Um, but generally, leaving this default will get you going. And then we have our confirmation. It's going to install a ton of stuff, so this might take a little bit. And we'll start that installation. So my installation process took about five minutes. I'm running on an SSD uh, with a fairly modest CPU. Now, in this screen, you'll notice there are some post-installation tasks for Windows Server Update Services. That's because simply installing the role doesn't do everything that we need it to do. In order to make it functional, we need to do a little bit more. So as you scroll through here, you'll notice there aren't any other post-installation tasks. You can click here and get right to it, uh, but I know a lot of people sometimes don't do that and they click close. Well, how would you get back to it if you did click close? up here at the flag, this notifications, you have the ability to do post installation tasks right here. Same link essentially. So when we select that, uh, another window is going to open here in a moment. And it's going to allow us to, let's try it again, uh, there we go. Um, we're doing the configuration right now. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, this additional wizard is going to allow us to set up exactly what we want our server to manage as far as what products are going to be uh, queried for updates and what products are going to be available to our clients. So this might just take a moment. Uh, another thing while this is running uh, that's worth mentioning is that under tools now you will have a Windows Server Update Services tool. Uh, this is going to be available for you to manage your server right from here. Uh, I find that in most environments you actually end up installing this tool on your machine, your client machine that you do your daily tasks on. That way you can just remote in to your server and you don't have to sit down in front of your actual server to do this work. So I'm going to let this finish. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to interrupt that process. Um, but we're going to go into here in just a moment. After what seemed to take a unusually long amount of time, my uh, configuration did finish, and all of the configuration set up. And now all we need to do is go into this Windows Server Update Services tool to do some last-minute stuff. It's within here that we get to see all of our reporting, uh, set up all of our rules as far as which updates we're allowed to push out and which ones we're holding back and when to synchronize, things like that. So here is our wizard. Watch out, sometimes this will pop behind your, your other window. You can choose whether or not you want to join the Microsoft Update Improvement Program. I'm going to deselect that for now. And what is our upstream server? Now this gives us a couple of options. If you wanted to kind of daisy chain together a couple of Windows Server Update services, machines. You can do that. You can synchronize directly from the Windows Update site or you can synchronize from a different one. Maybe you have a main server that does all of your configuration and then this is a secondary server that's used to kind of balance the load between multiple servers. Or maybe this is a branch office that you want to update but you still want to pull all of your configuration from your main server. In my case I am a standalone so I'm going to go with synchronizing from Microsoft Update. You can choose whether or not you want to use a proxy server if that applies to you. And the next thing you need to do is you need to connect to the Windows Update server. And as you can see here, the information that's going to be downloaded is going to be the types of updates available, critical or security updates, things like that. Uh, whatever Microsoft chooses to designate those as in case they needed to add a new type. And products that can be updated, things like Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, 10, Server 2012 R2, any of those different products 
may require Windows updates and you can select which ones you'd like to download and synchronize and manage from your server and then any available languages that you want to include for your updates sometimes some of the updates are available in multiple languages now these updates uh, this can, can include things like office it can include silverlight it can include, include things that provide additional features not just um, not just operating system type of patches so Microsoft is really starting to do a good job of putting all of their updates for everything all in one location and that is the Microsoft update site uh, so this really is a single source for us for any Microsoft products to do any updates it wasn't always the case back in Windows 98 um, and uh, even Windows 2000 for a while they were pretty much just for uh, the operating systems themselves you would have to go to a different site office.microsoft.com it was at the time to pull any of your office updates but it's kinda nice that you can centrally manage it all from one site through one utility this process does sometimes take a little while depending on your internet speed and it's synchronizing everything that has a Windows update from the Microsoft update site from basically the beginning of it so this can take a while uh, don't be surprised if this is kind of a lengthy process as well so the process is completed and now we can click next doesn't really give a great indicator other than the green line is solid now and now we can specify the products which we want to pull in and manage updates now it might be tempting to just select them all but that would mean your database is going to grow really large because it has to account for every update for every one of these products so it's best to only select those that are currently supported in your organization now there's a big long list of these and the one that's most applicable to me is in my case I'm not going to do any testing I'm just going to other than uh, the server that I'm working on I'm not going to do any uh, office updates or anything like that so browsing on through here you can see Windows and Office are selected by default because that's common for most organizations but in my case what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 for my updates. I could choose language packs if I want to include those. I can include drivers if I want to include those. Um, but I'm going to leave those off for my test environment here. And then we get to choose the classifications. What types of updates do we want to centrally manage? Maybe I want to include things like service packs, update roll-ups um, maybe all of my updates and upgrades would be relevant now since I am only picking one product I'm kinda interested in seeing exactly what happens here so I'm gonna choose them all I'm gonna actually leave drivers off because it was a separate section you will you may have noticed in the products um, part there was a section for drivers so I'm gonna leave that one off but I'm gonna include the rest and then I can choose when my server synchronizes with Microsoft Update. By default, it synchronizes manually, and it's perfect for my testing environment that I can initiate the test whenever I need to, or initiate the synchronization whenever I need to. But I don't need to synchronize automatically for my test environment. But in any organization, you would want your uh, system to automatically pull in any new updates that it needs to know about so that you can then go in and manage those so this is almost always chosen in a production environment in a testing environment manually is fine you'll notice it is fairly resource intensive to do these synchronizations so you don't want to do too much extra if you can help it and then I will begin my initial synchronization and you'll notice finish is alive here now but I'm gonna click next and it just says here's a couple of other things that you might want to choose to do the one that you'll probably want to do is assign some computers to groups with group policy and we'll take a look at that in just a second uh, but you can also create computer groups which is cool because 
maybe you'll have some early adopters for patches as well as your normal uh, rollouts. So for example, you might have some one or two tech savvy people in a particular department that are willing to be guinea pigs for lack of a better term and you could put them in kind of an early adopter group where they can pull in patches before everybody else and that way if there is some type of issue you could uh, address that much more quickly with a small group of people than with potentially hundreds of people with a patch that causes problems with your software. You could also create a computer group for your own testing uh, machines. If you have a small set of machines that you use for testing these patches, you can test them. Once they pass your tests, you can pass them along to a couple of uh, special users and then see how that works out and then you could throw things out to the rest of the company. You might want to use SSL if that's uh, a con if security is a concern uh, within your organization. That's really up to your organization and your requirements. And then uh, you can set up some auto approval rules as well. And any of these you could click on and see more information. And here's the main Windows Server Update Services console. Within my server, named Server 1, you're going to see a couple of different things that you can do. All of those options that I pre-configured can be modified within the options here. There's some good reports that you can look at, and this is where all of your computers are going to eventually be populated. Within all computers, this is going to be everything that's ever tied in to your organization through policy. And then here's where your groups are going to start to come into play. And then any updates that you've pulled in will begin to appear in here. Now, I don't have any quite yet. It looks like some are starting to come in. And if you want to see the status of your initial synchronization, just click on your server. This main screen here is pretty cool because it gives you a nice overview. Not only um, the proportions of computers that have errors pulling in updates, but also computers that need updates or computers that are completely up to date. And then it does the same from the perspective of the updates. How many of your updates have erred when installing, and how many are installed or not applicable, and how many are still out there being needed by computers. This first process will take much longer than subsequent processes to do the synchronization. You'll notice it's chipping away at it, and it will take a good amount of time. You'll notice there's a lot of things that do take a considerable amount of time just due to the sheer number of updates that Microsoft has released over the years. Now remember, I'm only looking for one product, but it still is a substantial synchronization. It's taking all that information from uh, Microsoft Update and it's putting it into my Windows internal database. You'll probably notice a decent amount of disk I.O. here. Uh, and this service is fairly heavy as far as RAM usage. Um, it will show a download status if you've chosen to download updates locally. Even if you haven't, there will be a few things that need to be downloaded onto your computer uh, in order to synchronize. So during this synchronization process, there might be just a couple of files that do get saved locally, but it's not too much. And then when you do need to go and do your approvals, you can approve right from here if you want approving security updates, which is usually a good idea to do pretty quickly, as well as critical updates. Here's the number of unapproved updates I have, and if you want to go and look directly at those updates that are unapproved, you can jump right in here and click on that link and modify it there. Now, way back when we installed, you noticed that the IIS uh, role was also installed. And that's because this actually runs as a website of sorts through IIS. And it runs on port 8530. And it will be doing a, an SSL on 8530, which is kind of cool because it doesn't jump in front and take up your port 80 or your port 443 if you want to do some real web serving from the same server. Just keep this in mind when we do go and set up our um, our rules in group policy to say where we're pulling updates from. We need to pull it from, in my case, server one dot domain one dot local colon eighty five thirty because it's from my server on that port, not the default port eighty that it might expect normally. 
I'm going to click on all updates here. This is the screen that I usually use when I'm managing these updates. And we may need to do a refresh here because uh, not all of our updates are being shown. But we also may need to, it's loading those right now, uh, we may need to change what we're filtering on. Do you want to see all of the unapproved updates? Or do you want to see all of the updates in this window? Oftentimes, if I know that I need to blanket approve a bunch of updates, I can do that by going to the unapproved updates uh, for all those that are needed, and then I can select all of these, and I'll be able to select those for approval. Now, not much is going to happen until these processes are complete. So in the meantime, I'm going to go in and um, tell my clients to use this as my Windows Update Server. I can do that through, actually I can't do it from this one. I need to add an additional feature because I don't have my group policy utility here. So in order to do that I'm going to add a feature. I'm going to zip on through here pretty quick. I'm going to select my server. I'm going to select no role in this case. I just need the feature to modify group policy. There's a lot going on on my server which is going to slow it down. So if you try to do any multitasking you'll notice that depending on your um, your hardware your processor might be pegged like mine. Since I am working in a virtual environment I have one virtual processor only set up on this particular machine. Windows Server Update Services does chew away a lot of CPU. It also chews away a pretty good amount of memory. Now I'm using dynamic memory and it's taken up two gigs right now and it'll take more if it needs it because that's one of the neat things about Hyper-V. But you'll notice 1.6 gig even though it doesn't really feel like I'm doing a whole lot. So this process might take a while. So I'm going to go through and get that group policy window installed. If you are running Active Directory, oh, here we go. Maybe I can do this now. Remote Server Administration Tools is where I'm going to find that. It happens to be a Role Administration Tool. It's an Active Directory Tool. So I'm going to go and grab all of the Active Directory Tools. Um, let's see, any other tools I want to grab while I'm at it? I don't think I need any more of these, so... Oops, this one I actually want as well. I want the group policy management as well as the Active Directory tools. So I'm going to include those in my list so I can manage from this machine. And I'll install those. This should go pretty quick. This process does not take that long to load up these tools. Although because I am doing so much here in the background, things do slow down a little bit. Jump back over here and see how my Windows Server Update Services is running. 72% synchronized. We're getting there. there are a large number of updates that you're going to notice in here. A lot of times, even though your computer may need 100 or 200 updates, when you first do a fresh install like mine does, it doesn't always feel like it's in the hundreds because a lot of times these packages are roll-up packages or possibly even expired packages. Something may have been superseded and you'll see that term in here a little bit too. When one update replaces another update, it's called superseded. And you can tell it in a rule whether or not you'll automatically accept superseded updates. My installation is continuing. And we'll just wait for this installation to complete. So now my installation is completed. I can close this window minimize my server manager and I'll come back here and take a look at my Windows Server Update Services see how that's progressing 
looks like my synchronization has completed here as well so I do have some updates that need approval. I'm going to jump back into server manager and go into my group policy management because this is going to be my way of telling computers on my network to use my server for updates. Group policy, I will expand out my forest in my domain which is right here, domain 01 and I've already created a policy for this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna left click on it and then I right click on it sometimes with these MMC's you'll get a different menu if you left click first and then right click you'll get more options because it needs that context in order to build your right click menu anyway we want to update this Windows update policy so you can see how I have things set up it opens the group policy management editor and the policy will exist under the computer configuration because computers are what are getting the updates not users so this is under policies and this is an administrative template and it's a windows component and then out of all these windows components it is way down here near the bottom Windows Update. Now I've chosen to enable a few of these options. Some of these options will tell exactly how I want my updates to push out. For example, um, configuring automatic updates, I want it to automatically download and notify for the installation. I'm not scheduling an automatic installation in my case, but there's a lot of different options that you can choose here. Uh, so you'll need this one turned on in order to push out this setting. You'll also maybe want to change your automatic updates detection frequency for your clients. Uh, you might want to allow users to install immediately rather than waiting and you might want recommended updates or you might not want to force that automatic restart when you hit that maintenance window. If somebody's logged on you don't want to bother them. So I've actually chosen a couple of these to be a little bit more user friendly. By all means look through and choose the ones that are most appropriate for your environment. But the one that tells us where to pull our Microsoft Update updates from is right here. We're going to specify an intranet Microsoft Update service location. So in here we're going to switch this to enabled and taking a look at this example this is where we're going to pull these updates from. So http colon slash slash mine is server one dot domain zero one dot local make sure that's resolvable or if you don't want to do that use um, the IP address if you feel like it and remember mine is on port 8530 and if you're ever unsure whether you installed it on port 80 or 8530 you can always go into the Windows update utility click on your server and you can see exactly how that is configured. Now I'm not actually using SSL, I haven't tied a certificate to it, so it will run off 8530 as HTTP and not HTTPS. Server1.domain01.local and 8530 again here's my server for detecting updates and my statistics server they're both going to be the same in my case and when I say OK to this now I've told this group policy that any client that subscribes to this particular group policy will use my server for automatic updates rather than the Windows Update website so I'm going to close the management editor closing it will make that save take place and just taking a quick look here since I've tied this to my domain level, it's going to apply to all users and computers in my domain. And in this case, because it is a computer policy, it will apply to all the computers in my domain. Now we wait. At this point, we have two choices. We can reboot some machines, which will cause the Windows Update process to run again. We can run a uh, command to automatically force those updates to check again. Um, or we can simply wait and over time when this group policy kicks in we are going to notice some new computers listed in here nothing's here yet but they will 
once they've all checked and synchronized with this server. And at that point, any updates that I've approved will be pushed to these machines. At this point, I haven't approved any updates, so let's go ahead and do that. Looking at this, it says zero updates of 207 shown. That's because I don't have any unapproved updates. I have some that may not have been approved yet, and those are the ones that I actually need to take a look at. I haven't declined any updates, so I'm going to choose anything except declined, and I want to show any status. And the reason that I'm not seeing anything until I do this is because I don't have any computers in that might potentially need these. 419 updates listed here out of the 431 shown. All of these are the not approved. And actually, I could have even chosen the unapproved option here to see these that I haven't yet approved of. Okay, so all of the updates that I still need to approve with any status, I can go through and approve them. Now, the reason it didn't say it was needed is because I don't have any computers yet that might need it. So I'm going to pre-approve these, and I'll select this and do a Control A to select all, and then right click to approve. You'll notice I can approve this for uh, installation, and that will approve to the all computers group here. Now, all of my new computers by default are going to drop into this unassigned computers group, so I need to approve it separately for that as well and I'll say OK. And right now it's writing to the database all of these approvals. This takes a little bit of time because there's hundreds of approvals to make. But this way, once some computers start to link into my server for updates, it will go through this list and compare what does this, the computer have and what does the computer still need that has been approved. So this gives us a nice um, nice way to quickly approve updates if you feel pretty comfortable with your update situation. For example, these are all updates that have happened over the course of several years. It's 2016 now and uh, Server 2012 has been around a while. There's plenty of updates that have gone just fine for most installations. So I'm going to go and approve all of those old ones. And then in the future I can go and um, handpick any updates that I want to approve or not approve. We'll let this run and complete all of these updates. It's almost done. There it is. Approval completed without errors, which is great. And now, if I were to refresh this, I should have no unapproved updates at this time. If I go back to my server, I can see that I don't have anything unapproved. Here's all my approved ones. And 12 are declined because they were superseded, or Microsoft is no longer deploying those or something like that. So there you have it. Once some computers start showing up, they'll be eligible for pulling in some updates. My updates have been approved, and everything is in place now for any computers in my domain to start pulling any of the updates that I've selected.